Hi, I'm Wendell G. Welcome back to the Weeble. Today is Monday, July 20th, 2043. We're just past the All-Star break, and the North League won the All-Star game over the South League 4-2, courtesy of four, courtesy of uh, all four runs, courtesy of the long ball. I was pleased to see three of my starting rotation got nods to the All-Star uh, game, so that was really cool. Um, Haida, Marrero, and Think Dog Think. Tripod. Uh, all three got nods, and uh, I like that. That's really cool. Um, maybe now Haida will actually uh, extend a contract with me. <laughs> Rat bastard. Um, so I, I've been struggling. I kind of missed out on this trade and a lot of the activity the past couple of days. I got a bad case of sinus infection and bronchitis, and I've just been antihistamined out the wazoo, just basically sleeping my ass off. Except for um, staying, um, you know, drug sober and getting up to campus and teaching, and then coming home and dosing up and crashing. Uh, so I've been struggling with the cog whole cognitive thing. So here's the trade. Here's my look at the trade, and this is my fourth take at this video. I the earlier videos just it just took me too long to find my ass with both hands. So let's go trade by trade and look at what the deal was. First, Amsterdam um, acquired center fielder Ibrahim, Ibrahim Ben Jihad from Buenos. And uh, let's look at Ben Jihad. This guy is a, um, he's, he might be the top center fielder in the league right now. He's 24 years old. Uh, he's got great range, which is the primary prerequisite for center fielder. Um, 65 rating at center fielder. And a uh, fine bat. Really, really fine bat. Um, outstanding in all categories. So, and he's been hitting uh, 322 slash 393 slash 500 for Buenos this year. Already a war of 3.7 and OPS plus of 136. Outstanding. Uh, and, you know, his bat has really helped power Buenos. Uh, into contention uh, this year in the, uh, the wild card, second wild card position in the South League. They are the second. Did I, did I, isn't that right? Buenos, yes. Buenos Nachos. Buenos no, Nachos. So OU gets one of the best center field pieces in the league. And in return, <clears throat> Buenos gets. Um, a future starting pitcher, Fernando Soto. This guy's at least a number two, if not the number one guy, the ace in the rotation. His 55 stuff may be clo pretty close to league average in this league. Um, but he's got a fantastic K per nine uh, rate and a home run per nine rate. K per nine of 11.1 home run per nine. Oh, I'm sorry. That's double A. Can't really talk about that. This ain't this ain't the bigs yet, son. Uh, he has got a little bit more growth to do to grow into this control rating. He's now 55 out of 65 projected 65 according to Super Mario 9000. And extreme ground ball pitcher. This is the kind of guy I would love to have this guy on my squad. The only knock against him I have is is not he's not great with uh, defense at, at pitcher. But you know what? That's what you have a second baseman for, right? Uh, that's what you have an infield for. Um, so. He might not win a Glove Wizard Award for pitcher, but you know what? He'll get guys out. I like this guy, this acquisition. And he was uh, coupled with Tomas Gonzalez, an outstanding corner fielder, uh, Mondo home run hitting prospect. And uh, this guy, I would say this guy's probably uh, WB already. He just started in AAA. Actually, he no, he didn't just start. He's been tearing up AAA this year. Uh, he moved up from AA. Where he was hitting 299, the AAA where he was hitting 375. Yeah, he's he's definitely WB already. I think get some reps this year. So that plus uh, uh, two third round picks went to Buenos in return for Ben Jihad. I like this trade for both teams. Um, the Ben Jihad. How to say this? Um, one reason I did the Juan Padilla trade is it gave me a chance to acquire depth in my system, quality depth. 
And I think when you're looking to acquire, this is, I'm having a really hard time expressing this. If you're out to win championships, you want to load your roster with elite players, no matter the cost. And I think that's what Amsterdam has done in the past few years. They have loaded their roster with, they keep going for the, the elite players, and they will quickly move a player that they think is not elite. Um, in return, what they're willing to give up is tremendous depth and quality to clubs that need it. And in this case, Buenos, uh, Buenos Nachos got some great depth and quality, both for the starting rotation and in the starting outfield spot. And a couple of third round picks, which haven't been very valuable of late, but there are some third rounders playing in the Weeble right now and doing well. And no, I can't name one. I just remember looking back at my draft picks and seeing I had some in the late rounds early in the Weebles history, and they were good. So some years of the draft is good. The second trade here, Zach Campbell, last resort for Pedro Rat Ramirez, not Rat Sanchez, oh you, Rat Ramirez. Um, this one is, it took me a while to figure this out, and this is the real reason that I, this is my fourth take on this video, because it took me about 14, 15 minutes to figure this one out. In return for um, last resort, Helga sends Pedro Ramirez. Now, what Helga gets out of this deal is, is a guy with a higher ceiling. He's at a 50 control now. He's projected by Super Mario 9000 to have a 70 control. Good uh, 60 caliber stuff. Three really good, superb pitches. Good stamina. Ground ball pitcher. Um, Helga, this guy's going to be the ace of their rotation, I think, for years to come. Or at least, if not the ace, he's going to be one of the best number twos in the league. Um, and so Helga gets a piece. The thing is, Campbell is not, he's not WB already right now. He um, has spent most of the year in double A and basically has played... Um, he started 12 games in double A, uh, eight games in triple, actually eight games, 10 appearances in triple A. Um, I guess Hel Helga's got him slotted in relief for the time being. Yeah, um, he needs more time in triple A to get that control up because to me, control seems to be the finicky aspect of pitching. You'll see pitchers will, who will pop up with high stuff and movement uh, quickly but the control takes a while to get a handle on. And I don't know what happens if you bring him up too early. Does the control bust? I, I, I don't know. I, I think you have to leave them at a good level where they can really uh, succeed uh, for that control to come into its own. So Helga is probably going to leave last resort down on the farm this year, and I think they would be well advised to do so. In return, uh, Amsterdam gets a guy who can immediately help them in this year's playoff race. And that's how I see this trade. Amsterdam gets an arm that's going to help them succeed in the playoffs and win the championship. Helga gets a slightly better arm that's going to help them next year, possibly the year after. More, as much or more than as Rat helps them this year. Both pitchers are durable. So I grade this trade as a wash as well. I, th I think this trade was good for both teams, Amsterdam and Buenos, the Ben Yehad trade for Gonzalez, Soto, and a couple of third-round picks. And I think this trade with um, between uh, Amsterdam and Helsingborg was also very even. Um, the time frames are a little bit different. Amsterdam wants right now, this year, this year's playoffs. And R Ramirez is young. He, he's got a lot more playoffs in him. <clears throat> but this will help them this year. Uh, Campbell's going to help Helsingborg next year and in following years. He might even help him this year, but he's, it's more of a risk. So I think uh, Campbell has a slightly higher ceiling, um, and his payoff will be slightly delayed. Ramirez has an immediate payoff and really a fine pitcher. I would like to have had him on my staff, and I wish I did have him on my, uh, in my rotation. The third deal down here between the Buenos, the Nakamura Blockabusta, um, I guess 
I like this trade from Helga's standpoint. I don't like it from Buenos' standpoint. And let me explain why. Uh, Nakahoma here is, um, he is the elite of the elite. Um, uh, Osik made the case that he's been, he's one of the best. He's been held down by his, um, the team he's playing for, 8-5 and five record. But his, he was talking about Cy Young Award and, oh yeah, man, this guy, 0 0.74 whip. That's a great number. Uh, 2.26 ERA. Good word, man. 4.6 war in half of a season. Yeah, Popeye. He's... If there's a better pitcher out there... I, I don't know if there is a better pitcher out there. He might be it. Uh, he's he's at least in the top three in the entire uh, WBL. Um, so, Helga, he's 22 years old. Uh, his contract is flat, 7.5, for the next three years, this year and the following two years. And then he's going to bust upwards in um, ex expensivity. But for the next few years, Helga's got an ace of the rotation to wing them through the playoffs. And that's what this was about. This was about Helga not reaching the playoffs, but winning the playoffs, beating Amsterdam at their own game by getting the best they could. So that's what the Popeye trade was about. And I, from, from Helga's standpoint, I like it. From Buenos, I don't. I don't think Buenos got the value they could have gotten. They got Didier Mouton, whom I like. He's a good center fielder. Who wouldn't want to have this guy on their team? The only knock against him, he's going to strike. He's not going to take enough. He's not going to strike out that much. He's just not going to take enough walks. Uh, his OBP might not be, you know, high enough. And uh, maybe you want him in, to stay in AAA through the end of this year. But he's going to be a fine, fine center fielder, fine outfielder for um, Buenos for years to come. And that's that's good. he got great speed, too. And that's great. Uh, Buenos also gets a 28-year-old catcher, Nayul Ben Cotton, a good catcher. Um, 28, he's too old for Buenos' power push with their young 20-somethings coming up, but he can stabilize the team, you know, through these wild card days you're going to have in the next couple of years. Um, he hit 289, 346 with Helga, 346 OBP, better than you would expect from a 45i. So, good catcher, good catcher. Um, I would have to look at uh, Buenos' roster to know how good, you know, how much they needed him. And then 22-year-old uh, minor league left fielder, Bahadur Atil. Uh, yeah, decent prospect. He could be a DH. Um, one of these guys you'd probably want to try out as a DH after he fills out these, if he fills into these power ratings. Um, and a good defensive guy. A guy's not going to hurt you defensively in the outfield or at first base. Um, and then finally, 18-year-old minor league pitching prospect, uh, Luis Big Dog Barajas, who was an international find by Helga a few years ago. And if he grows into these ratings, he's going to be a fine, fine pitcher and probably probably a number three or so in the rotation. Um, so he's got great stamina, good, reasonably good defense, and um, yeah. The problem is going to be the control. If he, um, for instance, 30, 60, if he grows into half of this control rating, so he ends up at 45, probably going to be maybe not you know there's some risk involved here whether he's actually going to make it to the weevil or not he's only 18. so this is sort of um you know something to a prospect to grow with uh and finally the last part of this trade was key west's first round pick uh in this upcoming draft and key west is currently um in about uh, fourth or about mid division in the south so it won't be a great pick. It'll be a kind of a mid mid range pick, but it should help Buenos continue to grow their depth. But the thing is, as much as I like Didier, and the rest of these guys kind of help to fill in the package, I, if I'm Buenos, I want to get a solid number two starting pitcher right now out of this deal. Somebody to plug in and Nakamura's place. Somebody who is not a Nakamura, but is a 22 year old. Uh, B-grade Nakamura, 
and that's that's what I would have, would have wanted in this deal to um, to finish to kind of kind of round it out and make it work for me in Buenos's shoes. Still, Buenos unlocked a lot of value out of Nakamura. They unlocked a lot of value out of uh, Ben Jihad, and yeah, I mean, look at what Buenos has got here. They got an outstanding pitcher, Fernando Soto, a center fielder Gonzalez, or a outfielder, corner outfielder Gonzalez, a center fielder Mouton. So they got two thirds of their outfield right there. Uh, they got a good backup catcher if they need it, maybe even a start starting catcher for right now. Uh, and a long shot of a prospect who, if he fills into his um, Super Mario 9000 ratings, he'll be a good one. And uh, that's how I see that those trades. Um, sort of a, an even trade with different windows for Amsterdam and Helsingborg on the Rat Ramirez versus Last Resort trade. Helga gets a little bit bigger potential return. Um, Amsterdam gets immediate payoff in this year's playoffs. And they have been relying on, the Tulips have been relying on some guys in the number four and five slots that um, won't get it done in the playoffs if if they get into a situation where Amsterdam is pushed to six or seven games. And so uh, that will give them a little bit of breathing room in the playoffs. Uh, in the uh, center fielder trade, Ben Jihad, uh, I like the returns for both teams. In the, in the uh, Nakamura trade, I just feel like Bueno should have gotten um, a pretty darn good pitcher out of this deal. A, a good 21, 22-year-old pitcher, a number two type of a pitcher maybe, uh, instead of some of these other, maybe instead of um, Badur Atul. Uh, but um, but I, it wasn't a lousy trade, you know. It wasn't a lousy trade. So, all right, well, that's how way I see it. And I hope my fourth take is more coherent than my first three takes. I'll talk to you guys later.